This is part of my two dog series. This is running part three, and this is a Norwegian elk hound male and Norwegian elk hound female. This is the ultimate combination. I'll tell you what, it's a phenomenal uh, experience for anybody that's running two of these dogs and matched pairs, siblings, related genetics, uh, phenomenal no matter which way you go, but of course a matched pair of siblings is the ultimate. This is Kai and Tico out here. Now Kai's mother Tora is a sister to Tico and in reality her mother's a half-sister to Tico because Tora is a daughter of Dakota. Now Kai's sister, half-sister, is Tekla. Because Kai's dad is Bram and so is uh, Tekla's dad Bram. And Tico is a son of Dakota and Tekla. Tico is uh, one of the original Tekla 10, the famous Tekla 10. And uh, these are golden ring elk hounds, the most sought after elk hounds of all time. These are legends. Now, I'll just see if they'll just hang with me and um, hang out while I do this video. We had been following a cow and a calf a while back, a mile or two back, and so they won't go back to her. I kept them back and the cow wandered off with her calf, which is good, but uh, a nice big fat calf and the cow's in great shape, good, good uh, coats on them both there, looking magnificent. Now I got to hunting uh, bands on them today and I just want to mention a couple of things about uh, this Adelaide stopped by the other day, a couple of days back. and. Uh, she's looking to get a new pup from us. Now, few, quite a few years ago, um, they were out hiking and um, um, Hunter shot their dog, mistook it for a uh, uh, wolf and didn't have it geared up correctly in the fall. So this is a cautionary tale for everybody, gear your dog up in the fall. Make sure it's got the hunting bands so that steers and queers don't shoot it. Now, almost all good hunters know to verify what they're shooting at. But nowadays, there's some that haven't got experience, haven't got education, haven't been trained, haven't been told things from the old boys, and so they shoot first, ask questions later. And half of them could be blind, too, you never know. But uh, gear your dog up so that uh, somebody can tell. Now secondly, put some gear on yourself so you don't get a headshot. Now for new hunters, I'll give you a couple of rules of the game. These are just things that are passed down from generation to generation that have been around for centuries that you may or may not heard of. Maybe you didn't get a chance to sit around a hunt camp with your dad with two elk hounds. But uh, single men, this is for single men with no kids. You can, two dogs are allowed, but when you hunt, you always hunt with your feet on the ground. And that means equal footing for you in the game. And so what you're hunting is on equal footing with you. That means no um, tree stands for single men and no bear baiting and tree stands for single men. You hunt on the ground, dogs are allowed. And the man that's feeding the family has a little extra liberty because they're feeding kids so they can use stands if they need them. Two dogs are allowed. Now we're in global martial law so these are unwritten rules of hunting and for both parties it's always bulls only. You don't shoot cows and you always take the bulls after the rut so that the cow is bred. Go to uh, as close as you can to make sure of what you're doing, but with two dogs, they'll find them. Now, if you happen to wound, let's say. Now, the other thing 
Unwritten rule number one after three o'clock in the afternoon, never release your ducks. Make sure that you don't let them go on game after that time. They won't be finding it and finished by the time it gets dark. So early morning hunts with ducks and um, keep that in mind. So those are just uh, a couple of pointers. Now know what you're shooting at of course. Don't shoot somebody's duck. And if you come up in my region and shoot one of my dogs, I'm just going to shoot you back. So beware of that. The, uh, the thing about it is uh, you shoot a Viking's dog, you might as well just shoot yourself. So that's the way it goes. Now these are a remarkable pair of dogs. The handler focus on these dogs is incredible. The behavior of these dogs is incredible. Uh, the minute I get back to where we're hiking outside the range and tell them, look, we're back on track here. We're not hunting that cow. They're with me. I can stop. They'll hang. They don't go back to where she was. Two dogs are, are phenomenal in terms of life expectancy on the dogs. They'll live longer. They'll play harder. They'll keep each other happy. They'll keep each other company. They're um, easier to train, easier to work with, better to manage. Now, I'll tell you a couple differences in the male and the female. For the most part, the female rules. Day-to-day -day operation, the female rules. And so she's more or less the boss in daytime operations, day-to-day -day stuff. Now, when a threat arrives at the gate, you'll notice a completely different thing happen. And what occurs is if the female is not aware of her place, the male's going to take her face off if she gets in his face and gets in, in his way. If a threat's coming to the gate, the male wants to handle it first. He expects her to back him up, but he does not want her to be in his way, and he does not want her face to face. He'll take the threat head on. And so I've seen these big males come unglued on females if they're in, in the way of the, of the male when a threat's coming. And if it's another dog especially, um, they get downright miserable. Like they will teach them hard that never get in their face, never get in their way, never get in front of them. Stand to the back, to the side, let the male handle it. And these big boys don't fool around when when they're uptight and they're looking after their turf and a female's in their face when the threat's there they'll they'll teach her she doesn't forget it a couple of them might but she won't forget it 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 hurts and um, you'll see that the, the female though for day-to-day -day use she's always ruling now the older if if they're an older female, hey, Tico, Kai, stay up by me here. The older females are wiser with a young male, so they don't get in those situations as easily. But two aged the same, the, it, it is the same, it is that way. Now, if you got an older male and a younger female, of course, she doesn't know anything, so bound to happen. But they're not out to, to do anything other than to school them. So, just so you know, that's how that works. Just stay on this side, Kai. Running two dogs in a social setting with other dogs is extremely good. Especially a male and a female. And that way you don't have... Um, Issues where just one dog's getting swamped by two or more. And many is the time we've been hiking in places where dogs are off leash, but there's a lot of them. And I've been hiking with a male and a female. And in the cases I'm talking of specifically, it was almost always parks, provincial parks. Now, unwritten rule is you should run them on lead in provincial parks, which I do. And lots of people let theirs off. 
the bulk of the locations that uh, we got attacked by other dogs was in provincial parks and normally by two dogs or more. And having two dogs was truly beneficial in those instances and quite detrimental to the dogs that um, attacked us. So I prefer to um, have, have a male and a female. Now, <clears throat> in the instance of, of a situation like that, um, it's proven over centuries that the old boys knew if you're going to have dogs at home and you're living in remote terrains, Tico, Kai, you come on this side so I can see you in the video. Kai, Tico. In the old days and even today, lots, they will run two males, or uh, one male and two females. And uh, that way you can take the male and the female, the better of the two in hunt capabilities, take them up on the hill and you can leave the old experienced uh, protective female at home and let her guard the gate. And that way, if a threat does come, it is neutralized, especially if it comes with three dogs there. Kai, Tico, you come up by me. Come on up here. I'll just bring them back up in the video. Hey, hi, hi. Just stay by me here. I'll just point this over here. You guys stick around. Hey. Now training two is no harder than training one. In fact, you can almost train two faster. Now if you already have one and it's trained, training the second is like lightning speed because the mentor dog will train the, the other one super fast. Now this is the very ultimate of sibling uh, related genetics. When you're running dogs that are related, they've got similar dogs in the background. And in this case, we have multiple dogs in the background the same. The father of Kai, of course, is the grandfather of Tico. The father of Tico is the grandfather of Kai. So the mother of Tico is the half-sister to Kai. It's very, very cool. The mother of Kai is the half-sister to Tico. So you get a, a, a pair of dogs here that literally think, act, respond, do everything the same or very, very close. It's a very cool uh, way to have uh, two, two dogs. And two dogs are actually easier to maintain out because when one's a little further, the other one will hang and it draws the other one back and vice versa. So one dog, he might range a little further. Both these are fairly far ranging dogs, but when you run them together, it shortens the distance up. It's, uh, where's my girl Kai? She was right here. But it shortens the distance up for both. Just by sheer osmosis, really. Here she is. So they both stick around closer. Now, you, you heard that raven back there, right? So the ravens will track us and they'll work with us and they're actually telling us where that moose is back there. They're, they're over top that moose and they knew we were coming through and they know where we are so they're letting us know hey the moose is back here and ravens have always worked with the viking dogs all the time and the they tend to follow the viking dog 
and work with the Viking dog because they understand over centuries that where these dogs go, there's going to be some food because these dogs are hunting. And uh, so what uh, we find is the ravens, they stick around the yard with us, they work with us, but when they leave in the morning and they catch us up here, they'll come and hang out. It's, it's quite fascinating. And the dogs are at peace with them, but also the dogs understand them. I wonder if I can get Kai out of that uh, little spot there. She's just hiding in the bush. Let me just see if I can move over here. There she is right there. Now, just in case you're wondering um, if your dog has eaten a little bit of grass like that, right? Well, that's natural ivermectin. In case you wondered what that is. There's Tico. Good shot of Tico right here. And so you should always be using ivermectin on your dogs on a regular basis. That's a anti-parasite control mechanism. Deals with Lyme, all that. You can run it on both dogs, of course. Um, they both take very close to the same amount, which is a pencil size. Uh, the eraser. The eraser on the pencil. Tico, don't be down there. You stay up here. The eraser on the pencil. You give that to him three, one day, two days, three days, and then give him five days off. Then do it again. Give him five days off, do it again. Then you can go monthly or basically every two or three weeks. The, the eggs hatch out every two weeks. So once you got that main batch killed off, then once the eggs hatch out again, you can kill that next batch off. When you're out and about with hunting dogs, they're coming across all kinds of um, kill and different things. So um, you can you can keep uh, that parasite load low. Now remember, parasites are what cause cancer in dogs, and so you can deal with that whole. Okay, you can come up here. You can deal with that problem with the same method. Keep the parasite count low. Cancer can't survive. Won't start. Good girl. You just stay by me. Tico's coming back right away. So we've got pups on the ground now. A phenomenal litter by... Rita, a phenomenal litter by Kaliva, and soon to have a litter out of sage, or not sage, aspen, in these, in this breed. And so I recommend you get a hold of us, and the sage, or the aspen litter, sage and aspen are sisters, the aspen litter is going to be some serious hunt dogs. So it's golden ring lineage dogs, but it's Swix and Carew in there as well. And Bram's in there, Dakota's in there. Phenomenal group of males in there, and the females are just total rock stars. So yeah, now the Kaliva pups, wow, they are some fantastic. That's Pretty Boy Leaf and Kaliva, and Kaliva is a Silver Nova and Carew daughter. And let me tell you, she has some outstanding pups down in Idaho. So if you're in the U.S., you should contact us about that. You'll never find a better set of dogs than them. And you can get a matched pair out of that because she had almost even Steven, but she did have more females and males. But now's the time. Well, it's a glorious day up here and a glorious time hiking in the fall up here. I really just enjoy my time up here, especially with these two. Really, really cool. Tico, come back up here for a minute. We'll wrap this baby up. Tico. Kai, come by me for a sec. Come on. Come, Kai. Tico, come. Come, Kai. That's my girl. That's my big girl. Come on, Tico. How you been doing? But good, beautiful dog, this dog. This is the mother of Rita. Yeah. 
So them pups of Retin Pretty Boy Leaf, they're phenomenal. That's this is the mother. Come on, Tico. I want to Tico in the video, but that's okay. Go ahead, side. Oh, there's Tico. Come on, boy. He's hustle up here. Come on. Hustle. There's my boy. There's my boy. What a magnificent fella. This is a big male and uh, solid big fella, old world, ancient genetics, old Norland dog, beautiful dog. Yeah, good. Let's wrap this baby up, you guys. Yeah, phenomenal dogs. Good video.